wonderful to get to talk to you uh, um, twice in a year. So we talked earlier in the year about the uh, the new solo album, but one of my right. favorite albums of the '90s was Demolition 23. So cool. um, it was just a perfect album for me. I mean, I, I grew up loving Hanoi Rocks, and uh, for me, this was this was like a celebration of all the sort of punk that I guess inspired you in a way. Is that yeah, cool? there's always a there's always a part of me that's the punk was very, very much part of me and and Hanoi Rocks. You know, we took influence, influences from everywhere, but punk was the punky edge was always there yeah. in the streets, up against the world, and you know. <laughs> exactly. And also as well, the the nostalgia is something that you always revisit, and it's one of the things that makes I think your album special to me. <laughs> but on this album, it has to be one of my favorite Mike, Mike, Michael Monroe songs. Um, and I think you can guess which one I'm talking about. No, Hammersmith? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What a wonderful yeah. place. I, I actually got to go there. I only went there once in the early 80s. And right. I, 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 it was to, well, actually, sorry, tell a lie. I went there twice. I went there once in about 1983 to see Lords of the New Church. Cool. Which I guess you might have even been at that one. I'm not sure. I I guessed it on something. Uh, I think it might have been '84 though. Uh, yeah. I played yeah. sax or in harmonica, but I think that might have been like '84 or '85. So like yeah. When I was playing with Stitch. And, and I saw the Kinks there in 1984, which wow. I mean, it just gives you an idea of the sort of bands that used to play at places like that. Yeah. It's that was so sad. Point. It was so sad that they weren't. But I, I was actually looking at just. For nostalgia's sake, I was actually looking at some of the places you guys played as Hannah and Rocks on those tours in 1983 and 1984, and so many of them have gone now. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's such a shame. Marquee. Even yeah, the Marquis yeah. gone. I mean, that's probably the most memorable one, I guess. But um, you played so many places. Some of the Dingwalls have gone. The Electric Ballroom oh, yeah. in Camden. It's sort of like changed, yeah, that's gone too now. Yeah, that's but, right. And Ding Walls, yeah, I forgot about that. But they've, uh, yeah, they're they're all going. So it's wonderful that you, you you've sort of like celebrated that in the song, the songs. Yeah. Uh huh. One one of the questions I really really want to ask you because I saw you at the Astoria, which I think was one of the the only London gigs you played in about 1996. And yeah. When the album came out, there were two songs you played that night, and I hope you remember um, that I think were originals. Uh, I may be wrong. And I, I've only got an idea of what the names were because you played MC5, which I loved that night, uh, Kick Out the Jams, which um, yeah. didn't know the album. But uh, there was a there was a song called Love Song, I think, and one called What Love Is. Yeah, What Love Is, that's the Dead Boys. The Dead ah, Boys. I what it Love Is, from the first Dead Boys album. I want you to love what love is. And I covered that on my solo album, um, What You Want. The solo album called What You Want in 2003. There's a cover of uh, What Love Is uh, on that record. That was after this gig, but we mm. used to play. So, uh, yeah, that was the Dead Boys. What was the other one you said? I Want to Be Loved? Uh, love Song. A Love Song. Oh, The Damned. That's The Damned. I knew I knew it. See, if if yeah. if this interview had been tomorrow, I would have done my research and, uh, and found out those yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, that's the damn from the Machine Gun Etiquette album. Uh, I covered Machine Gun Etiquette that song second time yeah. around, but yeah. uh, love song. If we played love song, the damned that was the damned love song. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's great that Demolition Twenty Three is out, it, it, and it's an interesting part of your career as well because when we've spoken in the past, you've reminded me that um, the Jerusalem Slim album is probably one of your very least favorite albums that yeah. you've got. In. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was but Demolition 23 has always been one of your favourites that you've done. So, yeah. And it's funny yeah, we, that they, they sort of came so close together in your career. Um, yeah. Everything that went wrong with the Jerusalem Slim, we did right with with uh, Demolition 23. We we recorded it in uh, two, about two weeks. The basic tracks were done in three days, and then the, I did the vocals in two days, and then we mixed the song per day. So it was, it was about two weeks the whole album was done, and it was yeah. great. How, how long does it... I was yeah. just going to say, how long does it take you to write a lyric like Hammersmith Power? Oh, it depends it's, on the song. It's, it's, Sometimes it's one, it comes real, 
yeah, sometimes it comes as a stream of consciousness uh, very quickly, and sometimes it takes might take weeks and months. Uh, you know, mm. sometimes you leave a song for years, like my the newest album, uh, the last song, "Dearly Departed." I wrote that in 2001 and it's been just sitting around and then until now i decided to include it on the album so uh it depends on the song yeah it's always, it's, uh, it's always good when it comes easy you know yeah it was interesting hearing the demos as well because I, I guess that gives you a sort of like taste of what um little stephen brought to the um to the recording process he he, he was wonderful he he actually shared our review we were, i think we were one of the first to put the review out the re-release and uh cool he he shared that which was really cool and of course yeah he, he was there for the demos too i mean he he was with us when we made the demos yeah and he played uh he actually played uh hammersmith palais as well yeah on, on his radio show you mean no no he he actually played the venue back in the day oh the venue yeah yeah he did <laughs> the disciples of soul right yeah soul exactly soul. yeah yeah yeah, which, yeah which is wonderful um, um, I've got to talk about some of the songs on the album because it's the only time we're going to get the chance, I think. But um, yeah, the yeah. cover, the covers are all fantastic. But um, huh? one of the one of the songs I, I always loved on there is the Scum Lives On. <laughs> yes, which is, so, which is so true, isn't it? It's like all yeah. the people you love slip away, and uh, that's true. And, and the people that you don't like. Um, just managed oh, to, no. <laughs> Man, managed to survive. <laughs> yeah it, it started out we were we we were out having dinner with steven and I, at the end of it all as we were it was around the time when it was uh shortly after steve baders had passed away and i, I said now no, steve is gone i was like you know why are all the all the cool guys going the scum lives on and steven said yeah, that, sounds, that sounds like a song title so <laughs> so yes. we wrote that song and uh, we originally we had Donald Trump in the in the middle section, uh, which we we should have left it there. But uh, <laughs> now you could just uh, <clears throat> you could just fill in your own pet hate uh, you know, oh, uh, of, yeah. of today uh, in the names because some of the names are not relevant anymore. But I'm sure there's tons of people you can use. Unfortunately, for yeah, the middle section. Uh, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's so many out there. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you almost lose count. Um, yeah, but it's good to you know make people aware of Skip Baders and Johnny Thunders, Rob Tyner, and people like that. Some people have discovered MC5 and the Dead Boys and Johnny Thunders, Heartbreakers, and the Dolls through that. You know, just through those lyrics. So that's always yeah. that's part of my job to make people aware of those unsung heroes. I'm so glad you said that because there's so many great bands like that out there that people do need to hear. People do yeah. do need to appreciate music more, and I think that's something we're, we're sort of like lacking. A little bit, yeah. Uh, just tons of stuff that people don't, people don't never, yeah. they never hear about because radio stations are so limited with the uh, playlists. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was lucky in that when I was really young, I, in the days before the internet, I used to go yeah. out to this record store and I just buy albums that look cool. And so yeah. when I was about twelve or thirteen, I remember picking up the New York Dolls' first album, thinking this uh -huh. looks like it's probably the coolest album ever. And I was yeah. lucky in that it was. <laughs> yeah, so, right. And many, yeah, many, many years later, I got to spend an afternoon with Sil, which was uh, a wonderful, another one that we've uh, we sadly lost as well. Yeah. Um, the, another another one of my favourite songs, there's some great stompers on there. So um, Dysfunctional and Same Shit, Different Day are wonderful. But You mm -hmm. Crucified Me is it, almost like the odd one out on there. It, it's yeah, it's really uh, one of my favorites as well. Yeah, mine too. That's that's really it's different from the other ones, and uh, that that's why it's there. <laughs> I think mm. it's good to have. Uh, you know, it can't all be like pounding in your face. Uh, those, those are perfect uh, kind of dip. You know, for dynamics for the whole entirety. And I'd had that verse for a long time, and uh, then Stephen came over one day, and he said he was in a, in a taxi in a, in a cab. He uh, got this idea for the chorus and. He says, I don't think it's going to work, but uh, I said, well, let's hear it. And then he played it. And I said, oh, that's perfect for this. You know, then we combined the verse and the chorus, and that was perfect. It's one of my favorites, too. Uh, really, it's different from any of the other songs, uh, but it's, it's a great change of pace for that yeah. at that point. It's almost sort of like, sort of like, almost sort of like biblical references in there as well. Which oh, yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, the yeah. lyrics are uh, quite interesting as well. Yeah, you drank my blood, ate my flesh, rolled away the stone, rolled away the stone, walked the dead, said we live forever, but instead you crucified me. Yeah, it's very the Jesus. The only problem, yeah, the only problem is when you say roll away the stone to me, that always means more the hoople. What what means what the hoople? Uh roll away the stone. Oh, roll away the stone. Yeah, but it's about <laughs> rolling away the stone <laughs> from the grave when yeah. Jesus was resurrected, right? Roll away the stone. But roll away the stone, what a classic song. What an absolute, absolutely Mother fantastic Mother. song. Um, yeah. And, and the, the, the closer as well, Dead Time Story, is wonderful. Yeah, thank you. That I'm really actually proud of. It was it was my uh, my uh, tribute to Steve Bader's. And mm. I had those chords when I was uh, living with Steve in, uh, in London in 85. And, he, had, I played him at one one point, and he was humming the melody and stuff. And uh, then when when I heard he was dead, and I sat down and started singing that song, and I'm playing the chords and singing the lyrics. And now you left me too. Uh, ain't it fun? Ain't nothing to do. And ain't it fun? Ain't nothing to do. Partners in crime, uh, dead and alive. There's there's like eleven, I think it was eleven or twelve stiff song titles in within the lyrics yeah. uh, in that song as a as a tribute to Steve and. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, special one really uh, heartfelt and uh, Br brilliant album it's the first time i think my album of the year is going to be one that was released uh, originally <laughs> back in the 90s which is is fantastic how cool yeah. was it to play um sadly uh, you didn't give me quite enough time to get to your birthday party but how cool was it to play um the demolition 23 stuff at that show Oh, it was, it was really cool. It was fantastic. We had a great time. Uh, and we did uh, five songs. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if you couldn't make it. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, we came up with the, uh, well, at the last minute. Well, I mean, it was for, gig, gig was for sale for a while as my solo thing. And then after we uh, decided to do the Hanoi reunion, then, I mean, it was all, already, it was close to selling out. But uh, when the Hanoi thing came up and it sold out the next day, uh, but we did dysfunctional. We did nothing's all right. Dysfunctional, endangered species, and you crucified me and uh, Hammersmith Palais, and it was a lot of fun. And plus, I played uh, Dead Time Stories later on in the just yeah. acoustic section, so yeah. I played that how, one. How, was it a last minute sort of like thing to bring Hanoi into that show, or was it something? Oh, yeah, that was it was. It, yeah, it was. It came. Uh, it just came together like a few weeks before. I was, I I was gonna have Sammy Alpha and Nasty Suicide in the house for the demolition thing, and uh, and Jeep Casino for another song. I was gonna have. Uh, so then Andy could call me, and he invited himself. <laughs> he said, uh, "I think you know. I heard that you got this birthday party at a concert that." I mean, you know, if I have time from my world tours, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, yeah, right. I, I might be able to come by and play tragedy. And I says, okay. But then I started thinking uh, it would be cool to have all the different phases of my solo career, including the new Hanoi, the, re, the rebirth of Hanoi. So we played three songs of that and I was going to have Andy there. And then I thought, wait a minute, Andy's going to be there and Jeep Casino and Sammy and Nasty. So now I decided to ask if we could do this uh, original lineup of Hanoi and do a few songs with that. And uh, uh, everybody said, yes, I says, cool. Well, and I was gonna be a surprise, but then I realized that if people don't find out about it beforehand, <laughs> they're gonna be pissed off. <laughs> so we decided to make, do this uh, press conference and uh, announce it publicly. And, uh, yeah. and the Demolition 23 thing came about when uh, Jimmy Clark was gonna, come and see the show uh, with his wife he was just going to come you know fly over his he, he, he texted me he says, when is that going to be a, that he's going to come he wants to see it and then i said well if you're going to be there well let's do a demolition 23 reunion as a as a, the opening band like a support band so then uh he said yeah cool and then we kept texting and uh, talking and i was like yeah we're going to kick ass it's going to be great and then uh, finally it turned out that he had a uh, he, he he works as a drum tech for uh uh, the Metallica drummer. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so he had the Metallica had a gig like the next day, so which uh, was like a TV broadcast or something. So, so he had to be there the day before. And as a, he was trying to get a sub, and uh, even Lars had said okay, but the management said they they wanted Jimmy there regardless. So he had to bail. So uh, then I thought it was such a good idea anyway. So we had Carl Rockfist replace Jimmy for yeah. this 
and it worked out great. You know, Sammy, yeah. me, and Nasty. I mean, Jay Henning plays on the album, uh, God Rest His Soul. You know, unfortunately, he took his own life in 97. But with, and to him, this album is also dedicated not only to the Steve Bader's this remix, the remastered version is um, uh, dedicated also to Jay Henning's memory. But yeah, Nasty and me and Sammy and Carl were demos in 23, and it worked out great. It was really great to play those songs. And uh, it was nice to visit the original Hanoi Rocks too. Yeah. It was, it was uh, for the first time in 40 years. All the phases of my solo career, the old early solo stuff and the current band with Gin Ginger Wildheart and Dragon uh, visit, you know, guesting. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it was really a special night. It was. All in it, all was. It, it was very special. I know obviously a lot of people are asking if there's going to be another one, but I mean, personally, I think something like that is just, it's going to be a special wow. moment in time. That, that Yeah, it was a one of the Hanoi Rocks thing was a one off, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, that, it was really it was special and the the, the only the best way and the, the time to do it was uh, right there at the 60th birthday yeah. was, uh, did 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 you, did you film it for a release there's been yeah it was filmed for um it was um, there's a um documentary movie that's been in the making of me mm. uh, my life and career in uh, over the past two years and uh they covered that and there's uh there was some other other cameras there. There's a lot of filming. It wasn't like documented as a concert, but uh, the, yeah. most of it was its own film. And uh, we have a pretty good mix of it. It was, it was recorded on a multi-track. So uh, yeah. yeah. So last uh, time we last time we spoke, you mentioned the documentary. Uh, have you yeah. got a release date as yet? I know you're still filming. I saw yeah. something. Uh, yeah, the... it's going to be coming. It's going to be uh, there's going to be a premiere on January, uh, the end of January. Uh, oh. Not sure of the date, but the end end of January is definitely supposed to be coming out. And is your children's book coming out in English? Oh, in that's already out. That's in already English. out. Oh, in English? Uh, yeah. Not in English. Uh, that has not been discussed, actually. Yeah, no. Uh, there's no 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 talks about that. But uh, yeah, it just came out in Finnish only so far. I, sh I, I shall have know. to. I shall have to learn Finnish and uh, buy the book. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, it's not very long. <laughs> well, I, but, I might uh, be. I might be okay with a children's book. I understand Finnish is quite a difficult language to wow. learn. Yeah, I got to bring up that point, uh, but I don't know. I mean, you know, just not that. Maybe it's. I don't know. It might be hard to translate to English, and uh, then again, I'm not that famous in the rest of the world, so I don't know how how well it would sell. <laughs> you're, fam you're famous all over the place. It's just that uh, people, some people, are sadly haven't discovered you yet because uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you've got a lot of fans all over the world, um, even down here in Australia as well. So um, that's uh, lovely. I really want to said, so, Yeah, oh, I'd love to get you over here. I'm talking to people constantly about trying to get you over. Right. It'd be wonderful right. with the solo band. First time ever. Right. We're not that far from Japan, you know, Michael. I know. We've been talking about it forever. Well, <laughs> let's just um, hopefully it'll happen. So you, you were yeah. going to ask? No, I was going to say, I've, I've got my vinyl on the way. So the Demolition 23 vinyls on the way. I was hoping to be able to hold it up to you tonight, but it's not quite right cool. yet. So, uh, yeah, it's anything. got a poster and everything. And uh, so the, the artwork, we, uh, Rich Jones did the artwork, and I dug out some old photos and uh, made it yeah. really as Package. Now, now, now that you've hit that magical number, um, do you, I, I know you're always somebody who's looked back and some of the songs that you've written over the years are wonderful because you evoke pictures of moments in time. I think better mm -hmm. than anyone else. Bit, stuff like Hammersmith Palais, obviously, on the album, but also on all your albums, there's always a, a sort of like looking back with affection. Um, but I think no one really does it like you. It's it, it's it, it's hard to describe how how well you capture the moment, and you, you just make things special for people who are actually there, or, or remember you. or remember That's those times. I remember actually sne sneaking into the the gig where you filmed the Nottingham tapes many many years ago. Uh, oh really? You were there? I wasn't wow. old enough to be there, but I I actually snuck in through the kitchen, so it was. Uh, Wow, it was uh, it was pretty cool. That was my first show. Um, cool. What's what's next for the Michael Monroe band? You've obviously uh, been playing live. Um, yeah, we'll be touring on this album now for uh, you know as long as um, 
Uh, we can, I guess, uh, there's a tour uh, in February uh, in the UK and uh, we'll be, uh, yeah, just expanding our fame and playing as many places as possible uh, and, uh, you know, have a good album to tour. And then uh, eventually we'll make a new one and keep doing our thing and get try to get better at it. And that's what keeps me hungry too. Just try to strive for greatness and uh, yeah. well, totally you, achieve I mean, I mean, as, far as, as far as the solo albums going, in my opinion, they just get better and better as you go. So uh, thank you. You're going in the right direction. Definitely. Right. All, always have been, always one of my favorite artists. So I'd love if before you leave us, you could just. Um, introduce a Dem demolition 23 song that we can play on the radio for you yeah any you know for people that haven't heard uh, the record maybe i yeah, guess how much will be it. yeah Let's shall play. i introduce that yes please all right let me do a little is this going to be video or audio uh well i'm gonna we're gonna put the video up but it's gonna go on the radio all right i'll do this uh regardless do some harp in the beginning. I want two, three, four. Hey, Michael Monroe here. Check out my old band, Demolition 23 song, Hammersmith Palais. It'll rock your socks off. All right. See you around down the road. Thank you so much, my friend. It's always wonderful to speak to you. Uh, I Thank hope you. to see you one day down in Australia, but. If not, I should be too, heading back to I should be heading back to Europe in January <laughs> to catch you when you play the UK. Um, cool, man. All, all you, the man. best and take care of yourself. Thank you. you too. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye bye now.